welcome back to Friday Reads, where we help you find your next read. I'm Jill. And I'm Julie. And this week, we're going to feature some new books, new books that just landed on our new bookshelves in September and October. There's some new popular authors. There's some holiday books. So kick it over to Jill to start us off. Starting us out with a Christmas book, a Magical New York Christmas by Anita Hughes. A magical holiday love story set at the glamorous Plaza Hotel in New York City. So what's more Christmas than that? <laughs> it's Christmas week when 26-year-old Sabrina Post knocks on the door of the Vanderbilt Suite at the Plaza Hotel in New York City, ready to accept the ghostwriting position for the memoir of Grayson Westcott, a famous art dealer. A struggling journalist, Sabrina can't believe her luck, a paycheck, and six nights on her own suite in the plaza. She feels like Eloise, the heroine from her favorite children's books, to make the job even more exciting, Grayson recounts how he worked as a butler at the plaza 60 years ago for none other than the author of the Eloise books, Kay Thompson. Mm. What promises to be a perfect week is complicated when Sabrina meets Ian Wentworth, a handsome British visitor at the hotel bar. When Ian assumes Sabrina is another wealthy guest at the hotel, she doesn't correct him, a decision she doesn't regret after learning that Ian is a member of the British aristocracy. But things are not what they seem. The truth is, Ian is not a wealthy lord. He's actually the personal secretary of Lord Spencer Braxton. As the week unfolds, will Sabrina and Ian learn the truth about one another? Filled with magic that can only be found at the Plaza Hotel during the holidays and revealing facts about the author of the Eloise books, Anita Hughes' magical New York Christmas is both a holiday treat and a heartwarming story that reminds us that falling in love is the greatest miracle of all. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm also kicking it off with a Christmas book. I have So This Is Christmas by Tracy Andreen. When Finley Brown returned from boarding school to her hometown of Christmas, Oklahoma, she expected to find it just as she left it. Christmas hasn't changed much in her 16 years, but instead she returns to find that her best friend is dating her ex-boyfriend, her parents have separated, and her arch nemesis got a job working at her grandmother's inn. And she certainly didn't expect to find the boy she may or may not have tricked into believing that Christmas was an idyllic holiday paradise on her grandmother's doorstep when she returns. It's up to Finley to make sure he gets the Christmas he was promised. This is Finley's Christmas. It's about home and family and friends and finding her place. And along the way, she also finds the best Christmas present of all, love. A bit about the author. She graduated from the University of Oklahoma with a BA in journalism and professional writing, moved to LA and then spent many years in the world of film development. In her spare time when she's not writing, she enjoys staring at her fantasy football lineup, hiking, <laughs> gardening, perusing houses on Zillow, and making some amazingly cool candles that you totally would buy if she would at long last set up that website for her candles. So check out the book, So This Is Christmas by Tracy Andreen. I love that she put her looking at houses on Zillow. I know. That's part of her author, bi author bio. <laughs> My next one is for the fantasy lovers. Terry Brooks begins an all-new fantasy series about a human girl struggling to find her place in a magical world she's never known. At 19, Oris Afton Grieg has led an unusual life. Since the age of 15, she has been trapped in a sinister prison. Why? She doesn't know. She has no memories of her past beyond the vaguest of impressions. All she knows is she is about to age out of the children's prison, and rumors say that the adult version is far, far worse. So she and some friends stage a desperate escape into the surrounding wastelands, and it is here that Oris' journey of discovery begins, for she is rescued by a handsome yet alien stranger. Hero claims to be Faye, a member of the magical race that Oris had thought to be no more than a legend. Odder still, he seems to think that she is one as well, although the two look nothing alike. But strangest of all, when he brings her to his wondrous homeland, she begins to suspect that he's right. Yet how could a woman who looks entirely human be magical being herself? Told with a fresh, energetic voice, this fantasy puzzle box is perfect for fans of Terry Brooks and new readers, as one woman slowly unlocks truths of herself in her world, and in doing so begins to heal both. So I have a fantasy reader in my life, and he loves Terry Brooks. So this, if you want to try him, this might be a good way to start. My second pick is a popular author. This book is The Magician by Colm Tobin. This new novel opens in a provincial German city at the turn of the 20th century, where the boy, Thomas Mann, grows up with a conservative father bound by propriety and a Brazilian mother who is alluring and unpredictable. Young man hides his artistic aspirations from his father and his homosexual desires from everyone. He is infatuated with one of the richest, most cultured Jewish families in Munich and marries the daughter Katya. They have six children. 
On a holiday in Italy, he longs for a boy he sees on the beach and writes the story, Death in Venice. He is the most successful novelist of his time, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, a public man whose private life remains secret. He is expected to lead the condemnation of Hitler, whom he underestimates. His oldest daughter and son, leaders of Bohemianism and the anti-Nazi movement, share lovers. This is quite the interesting family. He flees Germany for Switzerland, France, and ultimately America, living first in Princeton and then in Los Angeles. The Magician is an intimate, astonishingly complex portrait of man, his magnificent and complex wife, Katya, and the times in which they lived, the First World War, the rise of Hitler, World War II, the Cold War, and exile. We previously featured this author's book, Brooklyn, in the corresponding movie, um, Brooklyn starring Sorcy oh. Ronan. He's the Irish novelist, short story writer, playwright, journalist, critic, and poet. So his new book that came on the shelves in September is The Magician. Brooklyn was a really good book, Yeah, too. yeah. <coughs> Perhaps some of you might have been waiting for this one. This book, The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman, is the conclusion of Alice Hoffman's Practical Magic series. So this is the last book in the series. The Owens family has been cursed in matters of love for over 300 years, but all that is about to change. This novel begins in a library, the best place for a story to be conjured. When beloved aunt Jet Owens hears the Death Watch beetle and knows she has only seven days left to live. Jet is not the only one in danger. The curse is already at work. A frantic attempt to save a young man's life spurs three generations of the Owens women and one long lost brother to use their unusual gifts to break the curse as they travel from Paris to London to the English countryside where their ancestor Maria Owens first practiced the unnamed art. The younger generation discovers secrets that have been hidden from the matters of both magic and love by Sally, their fiercely protective mother. As Kylie Owens uncovers the truth about who she is and what her own dark powers are, her aunt Franny comes to understand that she is ready to sacrifice everything for her family, and Sally Owens realizes she's willing to give up everything for love. So if you wanted to read the whole series, you would start with Alice Hoffman's Practical Magic. And then the next one is <laughs> The Rules of Magic, and then Magic Lessons, and then finally... The, the new conclusion. one. <laughs> this new one, the book of magic. Have you all... read all her books, Jill? No. I started and then I never finished. <laughs> <laughs> I've not read hers either. But I, they're very popular. They and are. If you like witches' stories, <laughs> I think witch stories are having a thing. My third pick is a popular author. This is Anne Perry's A Darker Reality. If you're fans of the Elena Standish series, this is book number three in that series. On a family trip to Washington, D.C., Elena is dis delighted to visit her mother's parents for their anniversary and celebrate with influential friends of her grandfather, a prominent scientist. Even Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt will attend that party. But the event comes to a sudden and tragic end when one of the guests, Lila Worth, is run over by a car in the driveway outside. Elena realizes that Lila had been trying to tell her something, and when a call from Peter Lucas back home at MI6 confirms that Lila was a British spy, Elena pairs with the American Secret Service to find out what vital info the young woman had in her possession. To further complicate Elena's trip, her grandfather is arrested for the murder. Desperate to clear his name and save her family from disgrace, she looks more deeply into her grandfather's scientific life and discovers that Lila had been desperately trying to keep the latest developments in nuclear fission out of the Nazis' hands. So you're going to have to read this book to find out what else twists and turns happen. Um, the author's first novel, The Cater Street Hangman, was published way back in 1979. Her works generally fall in one of several categories of genre fiction, including historical murder mysteries and detective fiction. Many of her books feature recurring characters, most importantly Thomas Pitt, who appeared in her first novel, and the amnesiac private investigator William Monk, who first appeared in her 1909 novel, The Face of a Stranger. She's published over 60 novels in her career. We have a lot of her books on the shelves. So, yeah, Anne a... Perry, book number three in the Elena Standish series. An amnesiac detective. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have another Christmas book for you, Always in December <clears throat> by Emily Stone. It started with a letter, it ended with a love story. Every December, Josie posts a letter from her home in London to parents she lost on Christmas night many years ago. Each year, she writes the same three words, missing you always. But this year, her annual trip to the post box is knocked off course by a bicycle collision with a handsome stranger, a stranger who will the, change the course of Josie's life. 
Josie's, Josie always thought she was the only one avoiding Christmas season, but this year Max has his own reasons for doing the same, and coincidence leads them to spending the holiday together. A glow with new love, Josie thinks this might be the start of something special, only for Max to disappear without saying goodbye. Over the course of the next year, Max and Josie will find that fate continues to bring them together in places they'd never expect. New York City, Edinburgh, the quiet English countryside, and it turns out Max had every reason to leave and every reason to stay. But what does fate hold for Josie and Max as Christmas approaches again? Always in December. It sounds like a similar thought to that other December book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also have a Christmas pick again for my fourth pick. This is a Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lali. 29-year-old Nikki Randhawa has always made practical decisions. Despite her love for music and art, she became an analyst just for the stability. She's always stuck close to home in case her family needed her. And she's always dated guys that seemed good on paper rather than the ones who give her butterflies. When she's laid off, Nikki realizes that practical hasn't exactly paid off for her. So for the first time ever, she throws caution to the wind and books a last minute flight for her friend Daya's wedding. Nikki arrives in India just in time to celebrate Diwali, which is the festival of lights where she meets London musician Samir. Maybe it's the splendor of Mumbai or the magic of the holiday season, but Nikki is immediately drawn to Sam. At the wedding, the champagne flows and their flirtatious banter makes it clear that the attraction is mutual. When Nikki and Sam join Daya, her husband, and their friends on a group honeymoon, which I'm not familiar with, their connection grows deeper. Free-spirited Sam helps Nikki get in touch with her passionate and creative side and with her Indian roots. When she gets a new job offer back home, Nikki must decide what she wants out of the next chapter of her life. To cling to the straight and narrow and the stability like always, or take a leap of faith and live the kind of bold life the old Nikki would never dream of. So, kind of an interesting premise in this one. This author is a Canadian writer of Indian heritage. Um, she currently works as a journalist at a legal magazine in London. She has a black belt in Taekwondo and loves travel, yoga, piano, reading, and cocktail bartender. Ah. I'm always getting a kick out of what they include in their bios. So, a holly jolly Diwali, um, the Festival of Lights. So, I love the Christmas with the Indian mm -hmm. stuff. So, this one I took off our Lucky Day show. So in, in, that's a good place if you're looking for something new that's got kind of popular. That's a good place to look. It's called Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. You might recognize this author from his award-winning uh, novel, All the Light We Cannot See. 13-year-old Anna, an orphan, lives inside the formidable walls of Constantinople in a house of women who make their living embroidering the robes of priests. Restless, insatiably curious, Anna learns to read, and in this ancient city, Famous for its libraries, she finds a book, The Story of Aethon, who longs to be turned into a bird so he can fly to a utopian paradise in the sky. This she reads to her ailing sister as the walls of the only place she has known are bombarded by the great siege of Constantinople. Outside the walls is Omir, a village boy, miles from home, conscripted with his beloved oxen into the invading army. His paths and Anna's will cross. 500 years later, in a library in Idaho, octogenarian Zeno, who learned hmm. Greek as a prisoner of war, rehearses five children in a play adaption of Athens' story, preserved against all odds through centuries. Tucked among the library shelves is a bomb planted by a troubled, idealistic teenager, Seymour. This is another siege, and in a not-too-distant future, on the interstellar ship Argos, Constance is alone in a vault, copying on scraps of sacking the story of Athens told by her by her father she's never set foot on our planet the dedication of this book is for the librarians then now in the years to come so it's a it's a love letter to librarians with the story going through the different times so i still have all the light we can see on my reading list so. <laughs> yeah so do i i don't so know it if might that be a while library. before i get to that one <laughs> and my last pick is the burning by popular authors Jonathan and Jesse Kellerman. Um, a raging wildfire, a massive blackout, a wealthy man shot to death in his palatial hilltop home. For Clay Edison, it's all in a day's work. As a deputy coroner caring for the dead, he speaks for those who cannot speak for themselves. He prides himself on an unflinching commitment to the truth, even when it gets him in trouble. Then, while working the murder, murder scene, Clay is horrified to discover a link to his brother Luke horrified but not surprised. Luke is fresh out of prison and struggling to stay on the straight and narrow and now he's gone AWOL. 
The race is on for Clay to find him before anyone else can. Confronted with Luke's legacy of violence, Clay is forced to reckon with his own suspicions, resentments, and loyalties. Is his brother a killer, or could he be the victim in all of this, too? This is a harrowing collision of family, revenge, and murder. Stephen King said, things get personal for Deputy Coroner Clay Edison when a murder hits close to home in this riveting, emotional thriller from the best-selling father-son team who write brilliant page-turning fiction. This book is actually part of a series. It's number four in the Clay Edison series. The dad in this, Jonathan, he published his first book as a medical text, Psychological well. Aspects of Childhood Cancer in 1980. One year later came a book for parents helping the fearful child. In 1985, his first novel, When the Bow Breaks, was published to enormous critical and commercial success and became a New York Times bestseller. It was also produced as a TV movie. Since then, he writes with his son. He has published a best-selling crime novel every year, occasionally two a year, writes by himself with his son, and he's also married to best-selling author Faye Kellerman. Wow. So that's quite a family of writers for my last pick. Wow. <laughs> wonder what it's like at that house. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. We hope if you're looking for something new to read that we gave you some ideas. Check out our new book selection. These are all going to be back on the shelves. Check out our display for As Seen on Friday Reads at our circulation desk. We'll have some of these posted out there, too. If you're in the mood for a holiday read or just something from one of your favorite authors, love to hear from you. Comment, like, share our video. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.